home. I'm going to speak to y'all just for a minute. First, I want to say some thank yous. You said you're going to have a list. I don't want to miss anyone. Thank you for Norfolk City for always showing up, uh, always entertaining my ideas. Whenever I call Mr. Mayor and I say I have something I want to talk about, he calls me right back or he picks up the phone. We come in and spend countless hours about how we can change this city. Now we can do it with the people from this city and do it with the capacities that, we were, that were instilled in us from the people from around this city. I'm from Norfolk, uh, Tywater Park, Maybe it wasn't two miles from here. And I never would have thought that I'd be standing up in front of anyone and they'd have something, and I have something to say that they'd want to listen to. But I think that speaks to purpose and what God's plan is for our lives. I didn't know that I was called to do anything other than make money uh, when I was younger because so often, as you all young people hear, it's get the bag, right? We got to get the bag, got to get the bag, got to get the bag. And it's a destructive way of thinking when you don't have cultural competency, when you don't have financial literacy. You don't have a framework or a guideline or guidepost as to what you do when you accumulate that wealth, right? So that's what this is about. How can we create a legacy? How can we create pathways from our ancestors, which were mentioned by more than one person, to where we want to be? There's a lot of talk about crisis, right? Everywhere we go, we talk about crisis. To the point where you're now hearing people say, I don't want to hear about the pain. I don't want to hear about black men. I don't want to see shows. I don't want to see. And I'm the first person to say, well, why not? What do you know about the pain? When we talk about our history, things that we're, we have. We talk about shoulders we stood on. We talk about blood on the leaves, but we've never learned about who we are. And the only people that are standing in that gap in this country are our HBCUs. So it's, it's no mistake that we're here. There are many places. How many places have we been invited to do this at Ivy League schools? But as Dr. King said, when they asked him to come to the White House, what did he say? He said, I need to be amongst the people, the people that will create the solution sets for these crises. When I said I was optimistic on that video, it's not uh, naive. I don't think anything is going to change without us. I'm optimistic because of what our ancestors overcame. The fact that we can wake up, be in air condition in th on this soil, because if this soil that I'm standing on could talk, the place I'm standing, I can see the Elizabeth River. The people that have had to gaze at that river while being tortured and abused, the people that stood on this dirt asking God how it happened, they knew that we were coming behind them. As Brian says, we are our ancestors' wildest dreams. When you think about that, that's when you step into purpose. All of you are here for a very specific reason. Not only are you chosen, but you're chosen. And not only are you chosen, but you're chosen. If not us, then who? If not now, then when? Our people are waiting on something, and they are waiting on us. In filmmaking, content creation, I can tell you, I learned how to be a big brother from Thea on The Cosby Show. <laughs> right? When you think about the things that have had an impact, I always say, who has had more of an impact on medicine, Ben Carson or George Clooney? Right? Real talk. We talk about solutions. I had the opportunity to sit with this wonderful mentor and brother and elder. The knowledge that is in his head. All I kept saying in my mind was, turn the camera on, turn the camera on, turn the camera on. Because if a tree falls in the woods and all of the information falls with it, then we don't get it. So how do we scale our story? How do we scale our successes and our victories to get past the pain and start building infrastructure for the society we want to see. The real life Wakanda, a global narrative, a global initiative of understanding that we can say, not only did we come from that, but we came from that. When you look at the timeline of humanity, because we are the origin story of the world, slavery is just a blip, but it's an important blip because it's one that challenged our identity. And in the minds of brothers like this and sisters like Dr. Alexander, those are the solution sets. When I sit with brothers like Harry Belafonte, or I read, you know, Bell Hooks, or, or any of the people who have come before us and dedicate their lives to our solution set, I think to myself, how do I mass produce that at scale? Then I realize in my filmmaking, I can't do it alone. One film every 18 months does not work. That's why I walked away. That's why I'm building a distribution center system right now. It is selfish of me to think that I can save anyone. 
My ancestors weren't trying to save anyone. They were trying to capture the skill set and pass it on. And that's why you guys are here. You're my legacy, not the movies I make. Those things will come and go. But the people, everywhere you go, you're going to touch someone. You're going to say someone. And it'll be rooted in culturally responsive education. Because I tell you something, education alone is not the answer. If you're learning the wrong thing all day, and then you're taking and perpetuating the wrong thing to people, not a part of the solution. Which is important so, because when you come the first couple of days, you learn about who you are. You learn about your, your journey and your power. And you learn from it from a, a, an array of people. It's important, brothers, you respect our sisters. Yes, sir. They are the legacy of everything. They are the origin story because it started with black women. Right? Sisters, help us to help us. Because we're battling programming that has been instilled into us every single day. It's all a program. So we have to be the counter program. The people that lose are the people that don't realize that programming is actually happening. And we do it with storytelling. Brian talked about why we're here, and I'm gonna speak to it a little bit. I love Wiley, let me be clear. I love Wiley College. Home. Home. I love what they've done for us. I love what, uh, you know, Brother Denzel, I'm not gonna talk about him, but he's done a lot for me. Did a lot for uh, in bringing us there. But as Brian said, when I think about what we were doing in that community, what we were doing in Los Angeles, what we were doing when we went up, to, up New England in California, and then I come home to visit my family, and I can see the work that the mayor's trying to do and the support that he needs, I said, I gotta go home. I have to build there. And the highlight of my trip so far, and it's been wonderful with you all, but a group of young people came in, maybe some of them as young as 10, someone as old as uh, 19, we see Madison was 19, and to see these young people from Calvert Square, from uh, Young's Park, I know you've changed the name to Terrace, Holmes, but I remember when they were just parks. And I remember being those kids that felt like we had no real hope or direction. And to see them come in and to see the hope in their eyes about what they could be, what they could aspire to, to see the, the growth that's happened in the institution, congratulations, Norfolk State, I remember when it was just a few buildings, and it's grown. This college competes with any college I've been, I've been to. And, understand from, and from a historical standpoint in history, far exceeds the mall. So I'm here to sow, to sow into the community and to sow into you. You're a part of a legacy now where you need to recognize today is the first day of the rest of your life. Yesterday matters because it's a part of who you are. But today, where you stand, where your feet are rooted, where you're sitting in that chair, think differently about everything. I've had a chance to talk to all of you, look in your eyes, see your work, encourage you. But if we leave and we forget, we like the tree with no roots. Root yourself in your identity. Root yourself in the empowerment that you're getting from the people around you, in your capacity, in your cultural story, in the wealth of knowledge that is who we are, in the capacity of where we're going because we're going somewhere, I promise you that. And we have to be okay with recognizing that service has to be at the root of that. Yes, sir. We're not getting the bag, right? We're getting our identity back. Mm -hmm. I'm not tripping on reparations personally. I just want our identity back. Because if we wake up tomorrow and we know who we are, or if we're awakened today and we know who we are, the things we can do, I always say like, what would happen if like Jesus woke up and was like, what am I here to do again? <laughs> From an identity standpoint, I know I'm here to do something. And then someone walks up to him and says, no, you're good. You, you're supposed to go over there and just uh, work at that juice stand. And he's like, okay, what would the world be? And what does it say? He'll do, we, we will do what, Brian? We will do greater things than him. We will do him. greater things than him. What does that mean? What does that mean? If we believe that, then we can't change the world. Because guess what? I got a secret for you. The world ain't that big. It really ain't. You can travel the world, especially information, you can travel the world in an instant. The world's not that big. We've seen the world change from a tweet. Right? I always say if Harry Tubman had Twitter, <laughs> everybody would be free. <laughs> right? So we have the tools in our hands. When I told the story about Nat Turner, someone tried to treat me. Said, so, so, you're, so basically you're saying that uh, we should pick up arms and go and kill people. I was like, no. It's like if Nat, Turner, if Nat Turner had the tools we had, he wouldn't have had to kill anyone. 
He worked with what he had in his hands. And what you have in your hands far exceeds anyone that has ever existed before you in the history of the world. There's been more technological advancement in the last 20 years than the history of the world. How could you not believe that you're chosen? What a time to be alive. What a time to be a part of the solution. Leave on fire. Whatever that idea is, leave on fire about it. Because I'm on fire when it comes to what, what you mean to me and what I want to do for you. And what I want to instill in you. And what I want to instill in this city. We will have a film program here. Yeah. And I will do whatever I have to do to bring it. We don't build vacuums, we build pipelines. What you do in a silo, a silo, that's the tree that falls in the woods. But what you do at scale, that's the thing that has an impact on the world. You are the beginning of the pipeline, don't you see it? When I met Shamar, Shamar was like, even the way he spoke, you remember? Uh, Nate, uh, <laughs> he could barely look you out. Now he's like, how are you, sir? <laughs> When he started, he kind of just wanted to be an actor. Now the brother's on TV everywhere. He's doing movies, writing. He's been on Broadway. What a time to be alive. Do not squander this. Step into it and hold on to it. And know that we're waiting on you. The ancestors have been waiting for you. By name, when you were born, there was a shift. Step into that, and anyone that tries to tell you otherwise, rebuke them in the name of Jesus, or whoever you believe, because that's what I do. You would see, if someone came up to me, oh, I don't know if y'all gonna finish on time, I rebuke you. I don't got time for that. <laughs> Try it. It'll stop people in their tracks. <laughs> so I'm gonna close, but it's important that you recognize that. This is not a summer camp, this is an awakening. Step into it, right? If you are a praying person, pray. When you wake up in the morning, Lord, why am I here? What did he mean by that? Because if you call on him, he will respond. I promise you, he's done it for me. So I believe in each and every one of you, not just for today, but for all the things you're going to do, for your families and our families. The Bible says it's a good person leaves a legacy, an inheritance for their children's children. To think one generation behind, that's short-sighted. Think about your children's children, and not just the bag, but their identity. Pass the torch, but light yours now. I love you, and I mean it when I say that. I love all of you. For all of you that pour out your souls and your life for us, for all of you who serve, I love you. To my dying day, you will be recognized in my heart. But let's make sure we leave something that is worthy of passing to these first future generations. They will know we were here. They will know. They will know we were here. Norfolk starts here. Right? You got me. I said I was coming and I'm here. All right? This is the beginning. This is year one. We're going to keep bringing people in, keep building this pipeline. From the ideas to the distribution, it is being built. To the studios, it is being built. Not vacuums, pipelines. I love you. I appreciate you. Let's keep this thing going. All right? All right. Behold! The green and gold!